But if you will tonight, turn over in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Uh, I'll be preaching on the parable of the pearl. Verses 45 and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Father, help me tonight to be a blessing. Give me the strength of my voice. Loosen my tongue. And may this people be blessed tonight because of your word, not because of me, for I'm nobody. But I thank you for saving a nobody and trying to make a somebody out of him. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. And I thank you for your word tonight. And I ask, Lord, that you'd bless. And I pray, Lord, that you'll be satisfied with all that is said and done. And when it is all said and done, you'll be pleased. Thank you so much for this church, this pastor. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to come and to stand behind this sacred desk. I love you with all my heart, and I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life, even as I grow older. And I thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you have pushed in my way. Lord, I ask it all in the sweet, precious name of Jesus, and for his sake and only his. Amen. You may be seated. The uh, popular interpretation of this parable is a farce. I looked it up in the uh, Sunday School Quarterlies through some of the studies that they have in the Sunday School Quarterlies. And the interpretation that they give is that this merchant man was the lost man and that he was seeking for a goodly pearl. And that the goodly pearl was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> That's the popular interpretation. Now, you can agree with me or you can disagree with me. Uh, it makes no difference because I'm the one preaching. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to give you, uh, hopefully, something that you can take home with and understand. I think it's one of the most beautiful parables found in the scriptures where Jesus gave it himself. Now, the true interpretation should really be that the seeker or the merchant man is the Son of God, Jesus. And the pearl of great price is the lost. The pearl of great price is the lost. A pearl is formed whenever an oyster, which is a bottom feeder, and he's on the ocean. And as he stays on the ocean, he's on the floor all the time because he's a bottom feeder. And whenever he opens his shell, as the ocean current moves back and forth, his food comes into his shell. And sometimes bone from a dead fish or what have you, or sand, gets caught up inside of his shell. And it gets uh, inside the meat. And it begins to rub. And it begins to hurt. But as he grows, as as he moves along, the water doesn't wash it out. It just kind of uh, pushes it in. But he secretes a lacquer. And that lacquer 
covers over that sand or that bone to smooth it out to where it doesn't hurt him anymore. And it makes and forms a pearl. And this pearl is the only gem that you will find uh, from a living creature. The rest are made from stones. The rest are made from other things. But the pearl, bear this in mind, the pearl is a formed, it's the only gem that's formed by a living creature. Now, when the pearl is formed, it's not something that comes out like it does in the uh, shell. When it comes out of a shell, it's got rounded, uh, it's all a little malformed, so to speak, but it's uh, not sticky. It's not rubbing him as it would be. And it has dimples into this pearl. And this pearl has to be uh, polished. It has to be ground, sanded down. And when he's finished with it, then this pearl becomes a showpiece. Becomes a very beautiful pearl. You'll see that women wear them in their uh, earrings. Women wear them on their fingers wear them around their neck. Kings and queens put them in their crowns because these pearls are put there to showcase, to be shown, to be displayed in a, in a thing of beauty. Now, I would like to say this, that there are some things that you, you need to understand. When I was putting this together, it's been a few years ago. I had to look up to see how this pearl became so beautiful. And when I discovered what it was, I had to do a little shout. And uh, the pearl of great price, whenever I realized what the pearl of great price was, my heart, I, it it just swelled. I, I I found out that the pearl of great price was me. I just that's hard to fathom. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the Prince of Priest preachers, <laughs> he believed for a long time in the first uh, application that I give you that Jesus was the pearl of great price and that the merchant man was the lost man. Well, you know, I kind of got to thinking about that. Here's a man who, uh, very well known, very well versed in the scriptures. And so I took him at his word. But anyhow, I looked it up in a bunch of quarterly, uh, Sunday school quarterly. And I'd say probably about 90% of them promoted the same thing. That the pearl of great price was Jesus. You see, we can't fathom. In our mind, we can't fathom the fact that we're a pearl of great price. I'm a sinner. I'm humbled by the fact that Jesus would pay such a price for me. I'm humbled at the fact that He would even allow me to find out about this pearl of great price. Because that's what I am. I don't feel that way. Uh, I'm humbled by that. But I do believe this, that this pearl of great price came at a tremendous price. And I also believe that we have uh, been found. You see, the merchant man was the seeker. And I told you earlier, this was the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You see, no man, if he's in his right mind, seeks after God. There is none that seeketh after God. They're all going out of the way, live together, become unprofitable. So it's not the man that is seeking after God because he doesn't understand the spiritual things. You see, the natural mind cannot comprehend the things of God. That's why I find myself sometimes uh, just asking the question, why call us a pearl of great price? And if I get a little off or something, don't mind me. My mind's not where it should be. <laughs> but anyhow, I looked it up to see what uh, the, brings about the beauty in the pearl. And there's another individual that's not mentioned in the text who works on this pearl. It's not just the Lord Jesus Christ who paid the price. It's not... Uh, There's a lost man that he can't do anything about his condition. So it takes something else to do. The pearl doesn't just come out of the uh, oyster in a form that it comes out when it's put on your earrings or when it's put on your uh, necklace or whatever. A lot of work went into bringing this pearl and the beauty of this pearl out. Now, the other person that's not mentioned in this text, but is insinuated. I call him the peeler. He's the peeler. You know what he does? He has a little sharp blade that he'll take this pearl and he'll scrape it and scrape it until he gets it fairly round. And then he's got this little thing that he sands it with. And he'll sand it down. And he'll keep sanding it until it's perfectly round. And whenever it gets perfectly round, he takes a, a polishing cloth. And he rubs that polishing cloth uh, around and around on that pearl until he brings out the beauty in that pearl. When you first see the pearl, it's not a, it's not a thing of beauty. It's just a, a kind of a malformed. It's not round. Exactly. But when he gets through with it, he takes that pearl and he puts it on display. I mean, he puts it on. That, that, that's what he does with us, Rod. I mean, whenever you was out in the world lost and the, the, you didn't have a thing in the world to do with where, when you found Jesus, he found you. He came seeking for you. And when you, you responded to the call of the Holy Ghost. And that's who the peeler is. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the one who works in us. He's the one who uh, is showing us the things in our lives that uh, hinder our beauty. And Jesus, the, by the power of the Holy Ghost, he cleans us up. He puts a new robe on us. You see, whenever the son of the, uh, whenever the uh, prodigal son came home. A big party for him. But anyhow, uh, there was a jealous fellow there too. But you see, God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, He seeks every sinner. He never misses anyone. He seeks them and He finds them. And when He does, He cleans them up. When He does, He wants to put us on display. He wants us to be the kind of people that He can look, that the world will look at and say, you know, I wish I was more like that. I wish I had that kind of love. 
Because Jesus said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one toward another. And that's what it's all about, is that we, as a church, learn to love and learn to uh, bring about our... Oh, it went, went away. But God is putting us on display. He does it for a purpose. It's not just so that we can brag about, well, you know, I once was this, or I once was that, but now I'm this, and I've worked hard at it. You don't have to work hard at it. You can't do anything about it because you are... Uh, a sinner saved by grace. You're born that way. You can't help it. Uh, but the Holy Ghost can help it. And He does. And He brings us to that point that He wants us to be there with, with Him. Uh, the pearl of great price. Hard to understand. Hard to comprehend. <coughs> and it's hard to uh, fathom that I mean, if there's any humility in you at all, it's hard to fathom that God would reach down into the slime pit of the world and He would pull us up from out of the bottom of the ocean. That He would pull us up and care enough to bring us to salvation. And then the Holy Ghost comes in, He cleans us up. I remember when I first got saved, uh, I was a smoker. I decided that I uh, smoking wasn't that bad. Uh, and so I continued to smoke even after I got saved. But then something happened. Something came into my life and said, Hey, <laughs> you know, you, 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 you're a, uh, you've been called to the ministry. And here you are smoking a cigarette. Here you are puffing on them things. And you know what you're doing? You're hurting your testimony. You're hurting the people that uh, would be perhaps brought in to you. I think I shared this with you before. I had a young man that I worked beside. And I was uh, telling him that uh, I was studying the Bible, going to a little Bible college. And uh, he looked at me and he said, you're going to a Bible college? I said, yeah. He said, are you preaching? I said, yeah, whenever a place opens up, I'll preach. I preach on the street. I preach on the back of, the back of a pickup truck. I pre preached out of the back of your pickup truck many times. And <clears throat> I said that I was a minister. And he said, oh, I'm going to tell you something right now, Bagley. I'd never come hear you preach. A preacher with a Bible in one hand and a cigarette in another. And that day, that day I throw them away. Amen. And, you know, that's what the Holy Ghost does. He comes in with conviction. He comes in and He shows us the things and the areas in our life that are hindering God's work, that are hindering your walk, hindering your fellowship. And it's up to you to confess it. It's up to you to allow it to... Uh, just to get it out. Confess it. For if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I've met a lot of people in my life and in my ministry that I wonder sometimes about them. You know, how could God love somebody like that? How could God care about a man who would mistreat his wife, who would mistreat his family, who would uh, kill uh, or a woman who would abort a child or any of those things that, excuse me, that would, would hinder our witness, hinder our walk, hinder everything about it. Listen, Jesus came 
to seek and to save that which was lost. He's the seeker. He's the one who seeks the lost. He's the one who calls the lost. The lost man has no desire for God. The lost man has no desire to be a part of God. Do you remember when you got saved? I mean, I can remember the very day that I got saved. I can't remember the time. The only, way, only reason I remember the date is because my pastor wrote it down in my Bible that he gave me. And I, I just know that uh, I'm saved. I, I have received it. I have believed it. And now, uh, I'm not following my notes, but hopefully you'll get something out of it. I had... I had things in my life that I didn't realize were sin, that I didn't realize were things that I needed to get rid of. I cursed. And there were times that I cursed whenever I was saved. Now, that didn't, that didn't unsave me. Amen. It was just the Holy Ghost came in and started telling me, hey, you need to stop that. You need to get that out of your life. You need to get that out of your language. And so I worked on it. And sometimes that old word will come out of my mouth. And uh, I hit my finger with a hammer. Uh, sometimes I got to cuss that hammer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's something that we have to understand. We're still sinners saved by grace. We're not perfect. We'll never be perfect until we reach heaven uh, and we go to heaven and then we get that new body. And what a day that'll be. Amen. What a day that'll be. It'll be a glorious day. We won't have to worry about death. We won't have to worry about sickness. We won't have to worry about our uh, bad habits because they'll all be gone. We'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, we'll have a new body. Amen. Amen. On Resurrection Day. Just remember that the pearl of great price was a bottom was on the bottom feeder. It was hidden from the world. And as God began to work with this pearl. He polished it. He put a new robe on it. He brought us to where we're at tonight. One thing that I do love more than anything else on this planet is my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I love His, I love His people. And I would rather be here than I had to be anywhere else. I don't find any pleasure in other places. When I first come down with the cancer and I went through the operations and then uh, now I'm going through chemo, uh, I understand now the things that I go through are for my benefit. I know that this cancer has brought me closer to the Lord. I know that uh, some day within the next month or so, I'll have my last treatment. And my doctor told me, he said, you know, he said, you're doing real well. He said, I was doing better than uh, a lot of people that uh, was on this treatment. It's a new, I guess it's a new treatment. Did he say it was a new treatment? Yeah, fairly new treatment. He said, I'm doing real well on it. He said, I don't expect to find anything wrong once we do the uh, final test. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I know who is in charge. I know that I don't worry about it. It doesn't bother me. Uh, if the Lord were to Call me home tonight. 
I'm ready. In fact, I'll be shouting on the way up. And I know that my Savior lives and He is not only the seeker, but He's the peeler. He paid a tremendous price. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I thank God every day for that. He's been so good to me. And sometimes I look at my life and I think, Lord, how can it be that I can even think of myself as being something or somebody or that I'm good enough for heaven because I'm not. The only thing that makes me good for heaven is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He saved my whole sorry soul when I didn't deserve it. I'm blessed tonight to be a Christian. I'm blessed tonight that God saw in me a pearl of great price. I just don't, I can't understand it. I can't grasp it. But I believe it. I believe it and I've received it. And I thank God every day for it. I have so much more that I could bring out tonight. But I don't know how much longer I can stand. I'll stand until I fall. How's that? This merchant man sought the pearl. He found the pearl of great price. Now it also it says that he was the merchant man was seeking for goodly pearls. It says pearls. But then on the next verse or the next line, it says, And when he has found one pearl of great price. He sold all that he had and purchased it. He sold it. Everything. He left the glories of heaven that he might come down here and save an old wretch like me. You see, he was the greatest thing on the planet. The greatest thing that ever Existed and he loved you and me beyond life itself, more than life itself, because he gave his life for us. He bought the pearl with his own blood. With his own blood, he purchased the church. Now, the goodly pearls, as I discovered, were the Old Testament saints. They were goodly pearls. But the pearl of great price was the church. Which he, church, which he purchased with his own blood. He brought the two together and it formed one pearl. And that pearl is what he paid the price for. A tremendous price. I like that. I, th- I, th- I, th- I see so much in this that I could go on and on with it. And I just thank God for the opportunity to come and to preach to you people. I love you with all my heart. You're a blessed people. You've been blessed with a good pastor 
and a good wife. You've been blessed with many things. And I feel the love back. I really do. Somebody said, you get more hugs than anybody in this church from all the ladies. I appreciate that. And I do. And I love every one of you. I don't only hug the ladies, I hug the men too. Amen. When they'll let me, I remember one time I tried to hug a guy and he pushed me off. He said, I, I'm not queer. I said, okay, that's all right. I'm not either. I'm just a Christian who loves you. Amen. But I thank God for this church. It's been a blessing to me over the years. And I thank God for your pastor. I've known him for many years. I hope to know him about 20, 25 more years. Uh, Right here. Amen. So I appreciate what you have allowed me to come and to preach to you tonight. And I hope you'll have me back after tonight because maybe after the next uh, month I'll be back to my normal self. I can be dancing around the pulpit doing the things that I normally do. But pray for me. I know you do. I feel your prayers every day. I really do. I feel them. Because I know when I lay my head down at night, I know there's people praying for me. And I know that unless the Lord calls me home in my sleep, or if He calls me home in death, or if He just calls us, calls us all home at the same time, what a day that would be. <coughs> Excuse me. But I thank you for the opportunity tonight. Let's pray. Almighty God, we come in the wonderful, sweet name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving such bottom feeders as ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us tonight to hear your word. And I pray that we'll take these words home with us and we'll apply them to our hearts and our lives. Thank you so much for loving us the way you have and the way you do and for purchasing our salvation with your precious blood. Now, Father, thank you for allowing me to stand behind this sacred desk. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.